Alrighty. We're gonna break this video down into three sections. Maybe even more than one video depends on how long it goes. So, we're gonna start it off with the smaller things, the small little bits that I personally like or dislike. Okay, we're gonna start off on a negative note. The overuse of the, you know, insert reference to the fact star Sunset Shimmer had a boo-boo. <coughs> And she says, no offense. <laughs> they overuse it, in my opinion. Alright, on a positive note, though, I do like how they utilize Mod Pie. <laughs> it was short, it was sweet, and very funny. And I would like noted, I'm not a huge fan of Mod Pie, which is part of the reason I'm thankful her part was short, but with what they did with her, it was good. Another positive note is Big Mac's usage in the movie. Spike says that they were doing better than they were for the last five times, and Big Mac just comes by, nope, proving that timing is just so important in the joke. See. I do like they brought Tavi in, though I'd figured there'd be rioting otherwise. I'd have preferred her to not be kicked out in the first round, but oh well. I also liked that Rainbow Dash made a reference to her 20% cooler line, 20% less cooler. I don't think I made Grant. My grammar done did rand it away. I also like the fact that they made the Crusaders wearing their outfits from Showstoppers. And I also like their intro into the the competition. That was awesome. Let's see. Well, there's one last thing to note. The music in this movie, I didn't have high hopes for it, and lo and behold, I'm not surprised. But, the music during the showdown got a bit harder than the rest of the movie, and also when Sunset tries to showcase her guitar skills, she also does something a bit harder. So my question is, WHY COULDN'T WE BE DOING THIS FOR THE REST OF THE FREAKING MOVIE?! Admittedly, I know why, because it's a little girl show. Alright, next we'll be getting more into analytical stuff, I would suppose. Alright, first off, the fact that they actually state they're using music, therefore we need to use music. That's just... Now, in terms of using music to get the elements of harmony out, that one I can kind of roll with. Music, and by extension dance, has been long associated with mysticism. Rain dance, for example, and look at the Nintendo's Legend of Zelda series. I mean, there's precedence for it, but the fact they expressly state, well, they're using music, therefore we should use music. That and also expanding on that. The fact that Twilight's working so hard on a counterspell implies that this universe has more formulaic set magic. But then the end were like, ah, screw all this hard work and actually thinking it out. Friendship! I mean, yes, okay, it is friendship is magic, but still. I admit I'm somewhat biased because, hey, if I could, I wouldn't mind seeing a description of how a spell from, like, D&D gets done. Not just, you know, what you need to know as a character, but actually to know what the wizard go through, goes through to cast it. And if there's a big difference between the additions at that point, please keep it 3, 3.5. But Wizards of the Coast is unlikely to do this, though as I recall, they did do one for how memorization works, so that's something, but whatever. Moving on... Something I did like is how they set up the strife for the band, that it was already there and the Dazzlings just kind of pushed them in the right direction with you know, their mechanicisms and ultimately getting them under the trap door. That was awesome. 
Although, on the other hand, why does this school have a trap door on the stage? Now, don't get me wrong. I do know that, you know, sometimes bands might go for a dramatic entrance from below the stage, but I would figure that would be less wound and more... If nothing else... I'm okay with the idea that we're going to assume that CHS just has dang near unlimited budget, but still, just... Why is there a trap door like that there? Plot convenience! Or, in the words of Tommy Oliver, BECAUSE THE STREET MAN'S see. Finally, I do like how they use Trixie here. She had some importance on the plot, but not too much, and it worked in well with her character. Her arrogance is a very good vehicle. That and also it's a nice little nod to the fandom about how much baggage there is between Twilight and Trixie. Though, I, I am afraid that the next movie might have more Trixie. And while this may come from me not really caring that much about Trixie, but I'm of the opinion Trixie in Equestria Girl should be more jangly keys than anything else. So, for the... Oh, and the one last thing to note is, did nobody note that Rarity was being hoodwinked by magnets? I mean, yeah, she didn't have to wear it, but still, how is she supposed to know they were going to sabotage? So that's it for the more analytical bits. Next, we're going to get specifically into the Dazzlings themselves. Alright, much as I already noted, the music in this movie did not really impress me. And the dazzling singing, I, I'm, I'm on the fence on it. I don't know if I really like it or not. And even if I don't like it, that one would end up more being, I just don't like it. It's not, it's not like I had this undying hatred where it must be burned forever in the flames of hell. It's just kind of a blase, not really on board. But I could see it end up being like bats, where I come to appreciate it, but... I will give the songs this. Although there are times of which it seems a little bit too much. You know, where they're saying, we're, you're going down, we're going up. It's, that seems a little too direct, in my opinion. But, especially during the Let's Have a Battle song, they did come off rather well as being subtle temptresses. Where they're, you know, putting forth this really, by all accounts, not a bad idea. Okay, have a battle of bands. Sure, why not? And, but, how they, how they do that and then make everyone go strifey with all their magic, that's... I'm on board with that. That, that was a nice touch. That was actually a good use of music, whether I end up liking it or not. Give me a moment. Alright, though, two issues. And these, I'll admit, this is definitely getting into overthinking fiction. But, well, that's what I'm here for when I notice it. Give me a moment. Alright, first off, in the initial scene where they're in the restaurant, you know, feeding off everyone's strife, they make it sound like they were banished not too long ago. Probably a few months, years at best. Not the centuries they should have been banished for, and it should just be centuries. Sars World the Bearded seems to have been implied to have lived either after Luna's banishment or during it, so we're probably not looking at a millennia, but still, with how they sound, it's like they've just now gotten to the point where they can't stand it anymore, and I'd figure they'd come to that opinion much sooner by now. And also, without the crystals, they sound like crap, right? So how did they get their start? I mean, did they find the crystals then start singing well? But remember, the song, their magic power make their singing better. So how do they start? Again, this is getting into getting really nitpicky, probably to the point that even Tommy Oliver or Anthony C. would say shut up, but 
Eh, screw you. I'm picking. But yeah, there we go. All in all, it was better than Equestria Girls, even though really, even when they were just released, I didn't care that much about the Dazzlings. I mean, I've heard people give crap to Twilight's Castle, and I'll hand it to them. After hearing the arguments, now, I don't like it, but I figure that, to some extent, my opinion on the Dazzling's design is probably about how they felt about the castle. Probably to a slightly lesser extent because I'm not... I don't dislike as much as they dislike the castle, but still, I'm of the opinion they... It kind of looks like somebody just exploded on them. Admittedly, somewhat par for the course for this series because high fans... Well... Actually, yeah, high fashion, low fashion, all of it just seems a little crazy, usually, and overstated. Really, we're gonna call the chorus stripes and garish. They're downright sensible. But, yeah. All in all, it was better, even though I did like Sunset Shimmer more as a villain. I'm not entirely wa sure why it might be the reason I just mentioned. But, eh. I'd still panic at the idea of another... Equestria Girls, though I will slavishly wait for it if they announce it. Love-hate relationships. Dang, they're confusing.